If not, I'll reset it back up. So now I am doing a little bit of ZBrush recording that required some vanilla ZBrush, so I figured we could walk through this a little bit. So essentially, what I have here is if I go to my ZBrush data folder, so C, users, public, public document, ZBrush data. Go ahead and close it down here. Um, this is your, this is where everything is for when you have a like quick save files and also your Z startup hotkeys and your Z startup config files. Here's your custom user interface, startup documents, startup material, all that good stuff. So if you're migrating any data between like one version of ZBrush 2021 to another version of ZBrush 21 so I'm somewhere else, this is what you'd want to take with you is basically your config, uh, custom user interface config, and then your hotkeys folder uh, and all these config files and basically your Z startup this stuff right here. So now if I wanted to go like, you know, I have all of my ZBrush 2021 set up, but I also want to start out with vanilla ZBrush 2021 because I need to walk through some basic functionality, make sure my interface is, um, you know, vanilla, basically. What I need to do is I just went through here and I just copied this off. So I had my good one here. I just control C, control V, and I left that copy in there. This one here, I'm going to name... recording. So this is going to be like what I'm using for vanilla while I'm recording. And then this copy right here, this is my good one. This is what I'm going to use for streaming today because it's all set up with all my custom interface and my hotkeys and good stuff like that. So I'm just going to delete all that. So now when I start up ZBrush, it's going to look for this folder first. If it doesn't see any of these, if I left it like this, it wouldn't recognize either of these as usable. It would just make me a new ZBrush data 2021. It would be completely vanilla install of ZBrush. I mean, not the install itself, just your config. Uh, the install files are all here. So ZBrush 2021, this is where you're going to put where things end up in the light box. Like Z, here's your Z alphas, here's your Z brushes, here's your Z startup brush presets. If you have any brushes you want to bring in uh, while you're, that you want to use and assign hotkeys to. Hey, everybody. Um, just going over some really boring stuff right now. <laughs> um, so we have, and they, I wouldn't worry about these hotkeys right here. I think that these are all just like, you know, here's your Z startup. And then uh, you're basically like, what's going to come into ZBrush? Now there is another folder in here called Z data. So Pixelogic ZBrush 2021 Z data brush presets. These are the brushes that come in with ZBrush. So this is where I have, you see a brush presets copy. I just control C, control V. So I always have a backup to go to because if I make any changes to these, these are the core ZBrush brush files. So maybe probably just be careful when you're messing with these. Uh, and then when you start up ZBrush, of course, uh, now I think, oops, let me make sure I did that right. Uh, ZBrush 2021. So we called this, this is recording. This is the one I want to look at now. And even this one here, it's like, okay, I don't need the recording one here. So I'm going to say uh, unpin from quick access. And we'll just drag 2021 over here and we're good to go. So now when I start up ZBrush, it should be back to my our usual user config, my usual settings. And it should pop up right in the middle of the screen here. Fingers crossed. There we go. So we're ready to record. I've got my PAV custom up here. I've got all my little files in here and we're good to go. But like I said before, the, the C, this folder here, and I like having quick access to these. So basically, my Z brushes in here, you see I have a bunch of underscore brushes in here. These are all sitting, uh, oops, go to the Z brush tab. They'll all sit uh, right at the end here, underscore. So there's that. Now, I was going over some stuff. I was going to hit on some things here. So let me pull open, Let's see if I have any resources for this. I'm not sure if I do. I don't really have an agenda today, so if you guys have a questions or something you want to go over. We can certainly do that. Let me see if I have anything under creature. Creature. Not really. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Well, so way back in the day, I thought I had something on feathers, but I don't. 
uh, we did, if you go to my YouTube channel and you go to my playlists here, uh, incidentally, this is, so I have two, two playlists where this video will end up. It's going to be, I'll throw them on my ZBrush live stream full episodes here. And it's not ZBrush, it's just live stream full episodes here. And then also when I stream on Pixelogic's channel, it goes here, so the Pixelogic workshop. Here's the last couple I've done. And then if you go to my channel, so it doesn't hop back and forth, I've got the stylized owl thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look up bird feet. And I'm just gonna see what's going on with bird feet. Maybe I should look up chicken feet in particular. Yeah, I guess that's a pretty good one. So bumpy all around except for down the middle here. I think we can accomplish that. So let's go in here and let's make some bird feet real quick. Uh, question, hey Michael, can I ask how you approach for mobile game assets and PC game assets? Do you create supporting edges for mobile game for high-res model to bake out normal map? Sure. Uh, yeah, if, you're, if your game supports normal maps. I mean, I'll usually use supporting edge loops as a last resort uh, since it, or as the last thing I do. Um, if I need to hold an edge, I'll use creasing first. And then if I have to use um, edge loops, supporting edge loops, then I'll do that. But um, it's not the first thing I do. Build out, hey, pre drag. Uh, build out uh, my, my volume first, like what I'm trying to create. So if we have um, sphere here, hit play mesh 3D, control shift, let's grab slice curve. I'm also using my, I'm standing up again. So um, take this here. So we have the shape over here. Say so delete hidden. So that's the shape I want to make. We'll see your mesh half depth size down to zero. And then one half here. So this is the shape I kind of want to start with and Q mesh, probably your ball. We'll pull this out. And uh, instead of going through here and immediately being like, okay, let's, uh, let's go into dynamic mode here. And I'm going to say, insert single edge loop and go through here. If I want to do both sides, I'll do an inset polygroup all region. And you know what? I'm just going to go to legacy, um, insert region and just pull this in. Okay. okay I can tighten these up. I can tighten these up. And now I have a nice tight crease along here instead of doing that. Um, cause that's, especially if I'm going to end up like modeling over this and be like, Oh, you know what? Let's go through here and Let's say uh, I want to polygroup this poly loop here and then inset polygroup ball on this side and maybe Q mesh polygroup ball and hold, you know, pull this out or pull this in or something. Um, this, these control loops and um, ways to kind of control the fall off on your shapes there are a nightmare to use, generally speaking. I don't like using them. So I'll go through here and instead I'll do a crease PG, crease level of maybe three smooth so do a four and I'll just use that to hold my edge and then if I need to I can just bake this geometry off so I can go through here and hit apply and then that's real geometry I can just send that out to get uh, baked to um, as opposed to or if I do need to hold that edge for some reason or I want to have like I want it to be tight over here and uh, have a bigger bigger fall off on the other side or something like that um, you know I'll bevel that edge and make sure that that happens but that'll be a last resort so creasing volume creasing and then as a last resort uh edge loops and this is also less destructive too so i can just leave before i go to bake i can just be like okay i can just leave this here increase level of three smooth at the before i can just have this and if i ever want to make changes to shift d and then i can go through here and make changes and then hit d again and i'm good to go so if i did want to go through here and say okay yeah polygroup here and then inset here and then Q mesh here, and then do another like crease PG, ED for dynamic, and then we can go through here. Let's do a crease polygroup ball or edge of the plume plate here and here. So now I can make changes. I still have all my my borders here. Everything's fine, and I can just turn it on and off as needed. So I'm not stuck with. Um, when I do my supporting edges, my normal map and some spanner do not bake out correctly. I still divide the high res model without using SMT. Oh. You're talking about if you do, well, then using subdivision dynamic is actually more important in that case. So see how here's my original, if you're going to use this as your original low res, and then you're going to use this as your high res debate too, um, then I would say dynamic is even more important. 
because what's going to happen is if you don't use dynamic and you just hit uh, control D, uh, you're holding your creases good, so it shouldn't melt too much. But what can happen is if you just go through and you subdivide, it's going to average your vertices down. So uh, it could pull it away far away from your original low res, um, which can be problematic. I mean, this one, in this instance, it shouldn't. That should be fine since I'm, you know, maintaining those edges with creasing up until subdivision level five. Um, so I think this should be okay. But uh, yeah, use dynamic smooth. And then you can export this low res, or you can even clean this one up. It's like, you know what, I'm gonna bake this in a normal map. So of course, you know, it can be arbitrary. So I can just duplicate this off and say, um, collapse poly loop down and down. So now here's my low res here. And then my high res can be this one. I can hit D for dynamic. There's my dynamic. I can hit apply so it's real geometry. Export this as my high, export this as my low. And it should bake okay. If it doesn't bake okay, um, subdivide the high res model without using SMT. Uh, well, I mean, that might be like, problematic as well. Like if you, so if I subdivide this model, so I've got dynamic turned off and it's like, okay, I want to, I want to bake this out and I turn SMT off and I go through here and I divide, it's just going to do that. So like, it's not going to be smooth. It's dividing, but you know, so if you, you definitely want SMT on without using SMT. Yeah. I'm not sure why you would turn SMT off. So SMT on, divide it up. And now it's nice and smooth and you can bake to that. It's the best size to make my full character. My unified character is too small for noisemaker pores and I have to decrease my brush scale to make fine details. Uh, if you go in here to Z plugin and you go to Scale Master, you click on this and you click on this video here. So here's a quick video showing me. That'll show you a video for Joseph Drust's uh, Scale Master. This is a good way to set your scene scale. One thing I would say if you're bringing in anything externally, so if you want to go through here and say, um, let's do this. I'm trying to think of something I could bring in that would be bizarre. Eh, I guess it could be anything. So I'm going to go here to import. I'm just going to grab something real quick. Um, that'll work. So well, let's say like you go into Unreal and you export out uh, the the mannequin guy, and then you bring it into ZBrush. Uh, that's how I would suggest working is, um, oops, sorry, don't import cameras, okay. Uh, that's how I'd, I would suggest working is essentially go to our Marvel's designer avatar or something like that, bring it into ZBrush as an import and just work, start work, working natively. Uh, so we can always switch here, control N. So essentially I've got this weirdo file here and it's like, okay, I go down here because I've imported it. I'm going to go in here to size. And oh, in this case, let me see. Yeah, this one came in a little bit small. Uh, let's try this. Let's, let's do something I know that's going to be bizarre. All right, you know what? I wonder if I have something here. So here, file, export OBJ, desktop, single object, weld, blah, 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 millimeters is fine. Okay. So if I go in here, wait for it. So we got a window open or something. Oh, I do. Uh, close that. So essentially, let's go ahead and delete all these. So I've got a weirdo file sitting somewhere and I need to bring it into ZBrush. I'm gonna go in here to import and I'm just gonna to go to my desktop here. And we're just gonna grab that OBJ. And I drag this out and it's like, oh, good. 
Uh, this works fine. I can go through here and you're going to see I can make my draw size really big. Everything seems to be scaled appropriately, right? Um, however, when I go down here to my size, it's set to 2 because ZBrush natively wants to bring things in and set it to a ZBrush unit scale. If I append a cube, it fits perfectly right within that cube, that unify uh, bounding box area basically. So this is where ZBrush prefers to work. This is going to make sure your brushes are all compatible and your X, um, your not your symmetry, but like just basically all your tools that you're going to use within ZBrush like to work around this kind of bounding box. Um, the farther off this XYZ size gets, the more unpredictable ZBrush is going to behave, which is fine. When you bring something into ZBrush, it sets it to that size. And then when you export it from ZBrush, it's going to multiply it by this scale number. So it's going to multiply by 966, uh, 4972. So this is important. So basically you want to make sure that while you're in ZBrush, this stays at about two. The more it deviates from that, uh, the crazier it's going to get. So if I go in here to load a tool, and let's go in here to base bodies, male. I'm going to bring this guy in. Same thing. I worked at a completely different unit scale for him. Uh, it's pretty close to 1.8. And then when I go to export this, um, it's going to scale by 51. So these are completely incompatible. If I take this avatar here, or take this base body male, or to this avatar and say append my base body male, you're going to see he's way down here. He's tiny, and this guy's gigantic. If I go back to the body male, it's not the case. I, my draw size works fine, everything's great. If I go to this avatar here, and I'm like, oh, you know what? I don't need to work on this avatar. I really want to work on this base body male. So I'm going to hit F to frame. I'm going to go in here and sculpt on him. All of a sudden, my scale is way off. So I go through here, and I'm like, okay, I want to, like you were saying, I want to sculpt some poor detail. Well, it's kind of capped out here. You can cheat it, not cheat it, but you can fix that. You can go in here to Preferences, Draw, and there's a max brush size. So you can go down here to Dynamic Brush Scale. Uh, if, you're, if your model's too big and your brush caps out like here for at 1,000, you can go in here and say, you know, crank up your max brush size or increase your dynamic brush scale. We want to do the opposite in this case. I'm going to set this like 0.1. So now I can, my brush size can get down to this small, and then I can go up uh, from there. So now I can kind of get poor detail going. However, if I go down here to my size, I'm working at a 0.1 size. So now that's nowhere near two. So now ZBrush is going to act very, and one of the things it's going to act unpredictable with is its brush size. So now your brush size is way too big or way too small. You want this XYZ size to be around two. Now, if it's just one object, uh, it's easy enough. You can just go down here to Deformation Unify, and now it's set to two. And now your brush will work as intended. However, now you're going to see, oh, my brush gets capped out at this big. What if I want to move, you know, a larger part of his head here? That's where that preferences draw size comes in the dynamic brush scale. We set this back to one. And because we're at XYZ size of two, just setting at the one should be fine. Again, if he gets too big, let's go ahead and scale him up. You can scale him up, or you can also hit, um, you can actually use this XYZ sizing type in like 200. So now it's like, okay, well, I guess it caps out at 100. So we can go down here to size and say F. Okay, so now we're working at this brush scale. And uh, my XYZ size is 1600. Um, and now I go in here and I want to start sculpting. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to put my draw size up to 1000. And it's a pinpoint. It's like, oh, well, I can, I can fix that. I can go in here to preferences draw and I can say crank my max brush size up to 5,000. Now I can go all the way up to 5,000 and it's still this big, as big as I can make my brush scale. Okay, well let's go in here to dynamic brush scale and hit 10. So I'm going to do a, put a multiplier on that. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Uh, so I can just keep cranking up that dynamic brush scale. That's, that's a fix for your brush size. It's not really a fix for your working scene. So unify XYZ size to 2. Everything back to normal. Dynamic brush scale of one, max brush size of 1,000, and everything should be working fine. So the best size to make your full character, um, it, I think, is two to make it the most predictable. Um, uh, Noisemaker pours, and I have to decrease my brush scale to make fine details. 
then I guess you can do, you can under crank it a bit. You can go to dynamic brush sales, set it to like 0.25 or 0.5. But, um, and I mean, if that is somehow, like if this XYZ size, I haven't really run into that where XYZ size of two or a unified scale doesn't allow me to do everything I need and in ZBrush, um, then you can kind of play around with that maybe. Uh, change a pivot point for a certain mesh while using the insert mesh. For example, I'm making myself custom. Uh, yeah, so if you go to my YouTube channel and we go to, I think it was ZBrush 2020, Uh, no, what would I put that under? It would be 2021, 2019. It would be a, um, transpose uh, ZBrush IMM access orientation snapping. Check this out. So this video here goes through like how to set your gizmo IMM stuff, if that's what you're talking about. Custom Boolean insert meshes like to insert a half circle at the center of the point where it'd be if it's on the. Oh, um, oh, on an IMM brush. Oh, yeah, yeah. This this wouldn't help you there, uh, but for anybody it would help. I'll just copy this in here. This is a way where you can drag out IMM and it kind of gets skewed a little bit, and you're like, well, why isn't it following the surface of the object? That'll that'll set that up. Um, <laughs> there is a way you can. It's gross, but there is a way. Uh, I think I might even have a brush in here. Let's check it out. Uh, it's an old one. Do I have it? Uh, I don't. So I was doing brushes where it was basically taking an object and animating it out. However, you had to set the pivot to be the center. And basically what I had to do is put a bounding box around every single brush to determine where that pivot would end up. Um, and then I would just get rid of the bounding box. Uh, it's kind of I'm trying to see if I can. Uh, we can probably walk through that. It's it's boring, but we can we can do that. So way to snap move rotation. So way to snap move rotation to the center of another object. Probably. There's a lot of questions about that too, where it's like, I need to snap this face to this point, or I need to snap this point to this face, or this face to this face. Um, and I know like in any other 3D program, like Maya Max Moto, uh, you can just say this face on this face and it goes bloop and the rotation might be off, but then you can align blah, blah, blah. Generally for that kind of stuff, I just use IMM brushes and it's a lot less clunky for me than kind of going in here and selecting a face. I know, I know there's going to be some like, especially if you're doing like, well, I like to do um, modular sets and I want to do it in ZBrush, but I need all these weird ass snapping tools. Maybe do your modular sets not in ZBrush. Do all your snapping that you need and then come into ZBrush. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, there are some plugins you can get that could do like snapping. Um, but I can't really think of anything off the top of my head that would be a real elegant solution for like, um, you know, taking a pivot point. You can manually move it over, but you wouldn't be able to find the center of a pivot. So you have a subtool here and you have a pivot point. And it's like, okay, I want this to inherit this pivot so I can rotate, you know, like do a rotation of planets or something like that. So you have a sphere, make polymesh 3D. Let's go ahead and scale this down and control drag this out. And I'm like, okay, let's say split mass points. And I'm like, okay, I want this to be at the center of the world. Um, if I hold down Alt, I mean, if the pivot is the center of the world, it's easy. It's just hold down Alt and hit that um, house button. And then now this one here, oh, center of world. There we go. So this one's at the, they're both at the center now, but now I can just rotate this around that pivot center. Um, you know what? I think there is. I think under transform, there's some um, S pivot. Set pivot point to find the center points rotating to forming symmetrical editing and other actions when pressed. Mesh is partially visible, but determines the geographic center of the visible portion sets so the center of the object in the location. Doing this on another object, that I'm not sure. S pivot functionality. We can all learn along with Joseph Dross. Oh, so this is where I go. Okay, yeah, playback speed 2x.
This is Joseph Trust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, when I use S-Pivot, objects sometimes are not centered to the world. So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and the question is asking about the S-Pivot function. Put that to the side. I have a sphere like this, and I come across and say, turn the floor grid on, and then switch to the Move Transpose tool, drag this out, and then just reposition the sphere off in space like that. And now if I come over here to that Transform palette, and I click this S-Pivot button, what this will do is it's going to take this mesh and then center it to the middle of the world. So it's going to look at the bounding box and center it. So if I come over here and click this, you're going to see that the sphere now has jumped right to the center of the world. Now, most of the time, this is the functionality you're going to find when you use this S-Pivot button. So you click S-Pivot, it's going to pop the mesh to the middle of the world, and then when you click C-Pivot, the clear pivot option here, it's going to return the model back to where it was. Oh. Now, there is an alternate functionality with the S-Pivot button that you can run into. So as an example of this, let's come across our model here, and I'm just going to have the standard brush selected, and I'm just going to draw mode here, and I'm just going to make a little dimple. So I'm just going to sculpt this area right here. Now, if you have sculpted on your model, and now you come over here and use this S-Pivot, instead of taking the model and using its boundary box and centering it to the world, it's going to now look at that last stroke you made. So it's going to look at the dimple that I just created on the model. And now if I click S pivot, it's now going to center the mesh based on that stroke. So as you can see, it has centered that sphere directly where I painted that stroke on the mesh. So that process again, I'm just undo so this here. So I'm going back to my sphere here. Now most of the time you will not run into this because when you're using set pivot, you're just selecting a model. You're going to look at that last area, hold it on, and then centering to that area. First S pivot, so it's centered that area. Hmm. Uh, and, and you can probably tell by the fact that I have no clue how to do it, uh, how many times I've actually had to do that in ZBrush. So it hasn't come up in 15 years for me. So uh, I don't have a real good answer for that. <laughs> Uh, so we did, 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 trying to use crease edges. Oh, I was trying to use crease edges when I export the mesh. The creases are gone. Like Predrag says, yeah, you have to hit like what I kept doing here is um, so what control, oops, control Z. Sorry, for some reason it pops up a dialog box. It seems to take a bit. Uh, so we have, don't have dynamic just yet. So these are real subdivisions. So you have dynamic turned on, and if you export this right now. Uh, it's not going to behave correctly because it's just a dynamic preview. It's not real geometry. So in fact, if I was to go in here and be like, oh, let's go ahead and uh, turn on Dynamesh, it's going to give you that result because it's not real geometry. So if you want to export this actual geometry, hit apply. Now you have real subdivisions. Now you can export this as real geometry to bake. Um, and then now if I go through here and I say Dynamesh, no, uh, you'll get the smoother result. Um, oh, perfect. Awesome. You have any tips on why I would change? Yeah, I, when it comes to like, and I get it, because I mean, there are some instances where I'm like, and I'll show you guys this too, in case it, you, I mean, obviously the people asking this question don't really need this, but uh, for anybody else out there, you have a cylinder here, and it's like, okay, I want to snap this cylinder to uh, what would be, I don't know, a cone. So I have a cone here. Actually, I can just go through here. So we got our Polymesh 3D cylinder. And anything you append to a Polymesh 3D, we'll go ahead and convert it to a Polymesh 3D. So here's a Polymesh 3D cone here. And these are dragged out. And this cone is over here in space. And we have this cylinder. And it's like, okay, I want to snap this face to this face up here. There is, There are plugins that will do that. There might be some fancy ZBrush stuff that will do that. But generally speaking, whenever I want to snap something to another surface, it's as a... Um, an insert mesh. So then now I can just go through here and be like, well, yeah, I can snap to whatever surface I want. Um, but then it becomes a thing where it's like, well, I want it to snap directly to that center point exactly. Um, and I could see how that would be useful for sure. And maybe even like conform to, but I mean, again, how I use ZBrush, I don't, I don't, I don't really have like those kind of needs where I'm like, okay, Okay, this face on this face and this object conform to this. And I know if I'm doing like um, architectural previs or something, it would be like, oh, that'd be very useful to make, I don't know, something really boring. But I don't really use ZBrush to make boring stuff. So I don't need to snap constantly um, very particular things to ratios and, uh, you know, angles and stuff like that. <clears throat> I just use IMM brush and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's on there. Great. Now I'm going to turn this into you know, something, something neat. You go through here and sculpt out a, a skull on this thing. So you can go in here and, uh, let me see if I, if I don't have any uh, alpha skulls in here, but, uh, you know, go grab the Ryan Kingsline uh, skull and just put it on here. And now I've got something cool I want to sculpt and I'm not worried about like, oh, oh, wait, 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 this face right here. I need to do something very particular with this, this face. Like, nah, not me. Uh, do you have any tips on why it would change itself? Change by itself that XYZ is two. It changed after a while as the position, so I have to keep going back and unifying it. Uh, I mean, if you scale it, I think. So if I take, yeah, so like I'm already off of, you know, my XYZ size is three, uh, but I think that might be, 
Uh, I'm not really sure. I mean, as long as it's within a, a, a threshold, as long as it's not like 300, it should be okay. Um, you know, as I scale this up, this XYZ size gets a little bigger. So yeah, I guess as it, as it breaks that bounding box of two, but I mean, you, you can't be expected to just sit within a two bounding box for everything. Uh, but again, as long as you're not like at 0.001 or 200, that should work, behave okay. Uh, where I see most of this happening, where I see most of that trouble starting from, is when people grab a z-sphere. This is already at, um, oh, it's xyz size of one. But if you go through here and it's like, okay, I'm going to make a human. So I'm going to hit x, go across x axis and pull this out here and then pull this out here. So I've got um, middle of the body here. And actually, I should orient myself in space here. Z forward here. I'm going to go through here and uh, pull out some shoulders and some arms here and some hips. Oops. Some legs, knees, elbows. Beautiful. And we'll put in a little bit of a neck and a head here. This will be our uh, cool dude. So here's our character here. It's like, okay, I'm gonna start sculpting on this character. So I'm gonna go down here, my adapt to skin, let's turn on density and dynamesh, all that stuff, and just hit make. You now we got our skinsies here, we're in X symmetry. And uh, you know what, let's just go ahead and dynamesh this, sure. So I'm gonna dynamesh this, this resolution 128 might be a little bit higher than you expect. Um, and that's because probably your XYZ size is already at six. So if you're making this big character and you like really pulled out and the heads up here and the feet are down here, your XYZ size is gonna be pretty monstrous. So just remember when you're using Z spheres, um, your scale starts out pretty big already. So at this point, yeah, if I just go through here real quick, and just do a unify, now I'm an XYZ size of two. And now even your dynamesh resolution will be affected by that because your object is smaller, uh, dynamesh is gonna give you less resolution. But at 128, that's about what I expect. And I can just go up from there. So we can say 176. Go through here and start a... Look at that. Nice. Um, how can you soften edges normals like in Maya for game resolution mesh? I have to take my models to Maya for defining which edges are soft or hard before exporting UE4, which is a pain. Yeah, so when you go to export, uh, long, short answer, you don't in ZBrush. Uh, you can go in here to FBX, you can save this. Then your FBX options, there is, you can do smooth normals, all smooth normals. Uh, so 100% smooth, or you can turn that off and be 100% hard. Um, generally speaking, when you're exporting your high reses, you definitely want this on, because when you do a hard edge, it's going to, when you average your normals, it's essentially taking one normal position per vertex. So it's average. So it's just one value and it's going to be a much smaller size. It's going to be red much faster. Um, it's just all around good. Um, also, if your high res isn't that high res, it could also bake out uh, faceting if you have this off. Um, when you go to, um, when you go to hard edges, what it's going to do is it's going to go, okay, this vert uh, has these. Yeah, it's not right. It's kind of hard to Show in ZBrush. Um, <laughs> you can, you have, like, due to the camera, you have this way and this way and this way and this way and one vert. And instead of going, hey, I'm going to take all those directions and just whoop, average out one single normal, it's going to go, I need a normal this way and I need a normal this way. And sometimes even more normals to kind of maintain or give the math needed to go, this is the normal direction. So Hard normals are going to contain actually more information than soft normals because soft normals are just an average position, one position versus multiple, two, three. Uh, so when you export this with this off on a high-res model, it's going to exponentially increase your file size and uh, all that good stuff. So hey, back to your question. Um, yeah, there's no way in ZBrush that I know of to determine, if I have a cylinder here, edit, make polymesh 3D, and I'm doing a hard surface model and I've got my normals over here and I'm like, okay, I'm going to split along here and have padding in my UV so we can get a nice bake and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, they, I mean, basically it's like, okay, I want these to be soft, and you know what, I want to go in here and run a thing that's going to, say, uh, harden my edges along my open UV borders, I'm already paying the cost of the two positions on my UV, so it's free, and then I can use my hard surface modeling skills to like make sure my border edges end up where they need to for hard surface modeling. Um, I get it, but uh, in ZBrush, I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible to go like, these, soft. These, are yeah, these all soft, these all hard. Um, I don't think it carries that information out. I, think, I can't think of a way that would be like, do this. Unless it's all soft. If you want to export your lower model and they're all average normals, then sure. Just have that option checked on an FBX. Um, third party models in the ZBrush and hang subdivide, it will tear up the model along sharp edges. Not sure I've run into that. Um, you could do, I mean, as long as those verts are actually supposed to be welded and they are sitting on top of each other, go to geometry, Modify topology weld points. And then I'll weld them back. So if you had like this, so we can have these split off. We can say split hidden. And then I'm going to, and I actually have to be careful with this one too, because when I have merge, you can actually weld as you merge. I'm going to go ahead and merge these back. It's like, okay, great. I've got an awesome model here. I'm going to start subdividing. And it's like, oh, what the hell just happened? Um, as long as those verts are supposed to be there, you can go geometry. Um, I mean, you could merge down with weld option, but also geometry, modify topology, weld points. And then now when I subdivide, it'll be put back together. Cool, thanks for the kind words. Thank you, Miller. Uh, do you have any tips for non-destructive posing in Transpose Master? Yeah, when you do Transpose Master, you can turn on the, the layer option. And that way you can only, I mean, it'll be for every subtool though. So if you have a hundred subtools, you'll have a layer that'll have contain the pose data. So you can always go back to a non, so take your layer slider and just move it back to zero or turn it off and it'll get rid of the pose. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of non-destructive, but also kind of pain. And I suppose you could also, yeah, actually I want to say I've done this too. Maybe it was on my ZBrush for concept and ideation. I'm not sure if I have something in particular for that. Um, there is a way you can actually store, if you're talking about like, okay, I have a Z-Sphere rig and I'm posing it out and I want to snap back. Uh, you can actually, when you're posing on your Z-Sphere rig, you can put your poses in a layer as well. So while you're rotating your Z-Sphere rig, have layer turned on and you can save different Z-Sphere rig poses. And then you can have that in Transpose Master and you can bring that rig in. Um, that's kind of non-destructive. It might be better. Uh, I was thinking about a box too, a better way. I, there might be. Uh, again, they, uh, <laughs> I'm no ZBrush master. I just use ZBrush on live streams once a month. Uh, so. Um, is there a way I can mirror and weld a tool and keep non-symmetrical feature I trace using Smart Resim? So you want to mirror everything except for one particular piece. <laughs> yeah, there's a, well, <clears throat> yeah. So let's try this. Let's go in here and we have Unify. And I'm like, Okay, so this guy's not symmetrical. If I do a mirror and weld, number one's gonna yell at me because I have subdivision levels. So that might be first one is like, hey, mirror and weld, you can't have subdivision levels. Um, but let's say I wanted to keep my subdivision levels and I also wanted to keep this big lump on this side of this guy's head. Uh, but everything else I want mirrored. So what I probably would do is I would do this. I would say, control tab this point in history I'm going to go down to subdivision level one. And I'm going to say, I want this side to be my good side. Or you know what? It probably even more likely is I want to do a mirror and weld, keep my subdivision history, go down here and like you said, do a deformation, smart resim, and then just step up my subdivision levels here. Just so you can see that visually, what I mean by that is just going up in subdivision levels and then doing a smart resim, 
going up instead of visual levels, doing a smart reset. The reason I do that is because it can just tend to be a little more accurate and a little bit faster on high resolution models. But now you can see he's perfectly symmetrical down the middle. Uh, his abs aren't off symmetry anymore, but I lost my lump. Uh, well, this is where I can go into like um, BH brush history recall and just get my lump back on that side. And then I turn on X symmetry, and now it's like everything's perfectly symmetrical. I kept my set of in history, but I kept that lump. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, gotcha. Oh, yeah. And that's another thing, too. When you're talking about this grid down here, you can see the world center. So if I go in here to draw and say elevation at zero, that's the actual world center in here. However, by default, what ZBrush does is set this to negative one. And the reason for that is when you go to render, usually the lowest point lowest subtool in your scene is like the bottom subtool and that's probably going to be sitting on the ground so if you wanted a ground plane easily you know setting that to negative one is nice and useful uh, it can kind of throw people off though when they're like i i modeled this and it's you know not sitting at zero 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 but now it looks like he's on a ground plane on, on my grid uh, speaking of grids if you go in here you can change your grid size and your tiles and stuff in here under the draw menu so if that's throwing you off that might be uh something to look into Um, is there a way to make your working selected subtool transparent and sculptable? So while you're working, there is preferences, draw, transparency. I mean, this transparency in ZBrush kind of requires stuff around it in order to know that it's transparent. Like if I had a subtool in here and I say append a cylinder and I drag this back behind. And then I turn on transparency, uh, ghost or not, and then preferences draw. It's like I can I can switch opacity. I guess front opacity is the one we want here, and transparency depth uh, a little bit to kind of get the result I want. But I have this one selected. If I have if I want to sculpt on this one and have it have it be transparent. Um, I mean, if uh, you guys know this on render, you can go into BPR settings, turn on transparent, and then now when you render, it'll be transparent. Uh, but sculpting transparent, not that I know of. Uh, oh, and the so for Kirkland, uh, the non-symmetrical thing, and you want to use mirror and weld as opposed to using smart resim, it's the exact same process. Control click in your history, so we can do that too. Um, so let's say I'm going to do a quick mirror. Uh, I forgot. Uh, delete lower. Mirror, mirror and weld. And now it's like, okay, I've used mirror and weld, or I have a non-symmetrical thing over here, but I want to use mirror and weld now. Uh, that would be the next thing. Control tap this point in history, do your mirror and weld, and then use your brush history recall and just grab that back. I think that's probably the most elegant solution for that. <clears throat> sort of way to make a surface noise more crisp when applying to a mesh. Yeah, actually, now that you mention it. Uh, let's do that. So there's actually kind of a new feature in ZBrush. I'm going to take this piece here and we're going to say split hidden and we'll just run a DynaMesh on this. And you know what? Let's turn on Sculptors Pro and we'll just kill some of these jagged edges there and redrag. Okay, so let's turn off our floor and we have um, we have this and we want to do some surface noise or even if we're like sculpting, I'm trying to think of a good brush or in really any brush. We'll just take our standard brush and clone it off. Uh, maybe put, there is a noise in here, so underneath stroke, there's a new brush imperfection. So as I go through here, it'll start adding noise. There's also, underneath your brush, there's surface noise. And in surface noise, you can add noise to your brush here. So if you want to add very specific types of noise in your brush, you can do that. So now you can say, brush imperfection down to zero and you'll still have surface noise, that very specific surface noise. And then you can go in here to 
Russian perfection and add uh, even more noise on top of that, I suppose. Uh, but if you want to do sharpen up these details, or if we go in here like Damien Standard, um, oof, these are global, by the way, so I'll turn that off. Uh, the other thing in here, too, is jitter. So you can turn that up, and it will kind of just start bouncing your uh, stroke around. I'm going to turn that down. Uh, so we have this, and we have, oh boy, let's go reset brush. We'll reset all brushes. So now through here, we have our Damien Standard brush, and we're going to carve in some detail. Or another one that's good is... This is on the ZBrush Masters video, and I guess it would be under Creature. Here it is. Um, damn standard 02. You can Google this one, and now we can go through here, and this will give you it'll kind of inflate as it goes. So this will kind of give you. Um, I wish I remember what video it was on. I want to say Rodrigo Rodriguez. Um, so you can get. Some nice creature stuff going like this. Um, now, if you wanted to sharpen these details, there is a macro in here. So there's a macro, and you can do a enhance details, and that'll run a bunch of stuff to go through here, and it actually puts it on a layer. So if you want to dial this up, or if you want to overcrank those details, or do the opposite and soften them up, um, you can. Uh, there's also, if we go through here and just say delete all and undo that, uh, there's also a way you can go to here to deformation. And if you do a, sorry, um, make a new layer. This is also on another video. Oh, I wish I remembered what it was. I think it was something like, um, enhanced, bake all, sorry, don't delete, bake. Um, it was also something like, make a new layer. And then if you go through here and you do a, smooth on this layer. I'll go ahead and soften it out. However, on your layer, you can turn this off. And just like we were doing before, it's like, okay, this is a smooth amount. If you go negative, it'll actually run a little sharpen. So instead of smoothing, it'll sharpen if you go negative. And in fact, you can over crank the sharpen as well. So that'll give you a little more contrast between your strokes there. I don't remember what, but you'd have to look up the ZBrush Masters video and kind of dig through those. Um, yeah, oh, and as far as like applying to your mesh, so the, the, the whole question was surface noise, sorry about that. Um, let's go back here. And let's do this. Let's do um, Control W, Control Shift, do a slice. Uh, we have an object here, and we want to put surface noise on there. So we're going to go down here, and we're going to do surface noise. And, well, the crispness of the surface noise is also going to be dictated by your resolution. If you don't have enough resolution to support your detail, it's going to come out aliased and kind of soft. So the post-process sharpen is where that would come in. So again, if we want to go through here and like crank that strength a bit, Maybe, but even that can be controlled. So I hit OK. Uh, if you want even more control, so there's two ways to get control here. You can go in here to layers, add a layer, go down here to morph target, store morph target, and then uh, we have surface noise. You can go down here instead of applying surface noise, you can do mask by noise. And now you can go through here. I'm going to go to my masking options, say turn off view mask. So now I can literally um, kind of inflate through. Like so, and you're going to see I don't have a whole lot of resolution on here, so it's not really picking up enough of that um, surface imperfection. But I can go through here and I can say inflate of one and get my surface noise. And then past this point, you can go through here and you can say, okay, um, let's turn this off. You can say, okay, we'll dive the, dive, dial this down so it's no noise, and we can also go and invert this noise, or I can over crank this noise. Um, and if that's not really what you're looking for, if you're like, you know, let's bake all that, and I say, I really want to sharpen this up, this is where you can go in here and you can do your macro, and you can try enhancing your details, and then that'll give you all those. Um, or, like we did before, uh, shoot. Oh, I guess, yeah, we're back to where we started here. 
uh, and like we did before, if we go over here to, what did we do before? Oh yeah, um, made a new layer and we're like, okay, let's deformation and we'll smooth this down and then we'll come over here, turn this off and we'll do a negative smooth and then I'll go ahead and start increasing that contrast. Like so. So it's not, and, but again, you have to have enough geometry to really capture all that detail. If you don't have enough geometry, then it's going to look pixelated or soft. And if I miss anything, I'm sorry, I'm probably way behind now. Um, how can you export poly paint to Keyshot? It should just do it automatically. I do that all the time. In fact, if you're this out. new hey, we to ZBrush, um, <clears throat> well, if you're new to ZBrush, you can go down here to which one is it? ZBrush for ideation. New intro to ZBrush. There's like 60 videos that get you caught up. Um, if you're new to ZBrush 2021, you can here's the 21 21 whole, full playlists. You can go through here and it's, it's like eight hours worth of new features for 2021. Um, But you're going to see, uh, I'm trying to get back to what I was answering, uh, you can, so for every single one of these, I have a bunch of like little demo videos where, I'm trying to think of it, yeah, a good example is this one here. So here's a demo time-lapse video of going through here and then, so yeah, I've got a poly paint here. So I poly painted this guy's face and I want to send it to Keyshot. Um, it should just do it automatically. For instance, go ahead of here. Now there is some caveats to that. So you know what, let's, let's load that guy up. Let's take a look at them. Uh, oh, in fact, if you want, uh, so here's that full playlist, by the way. Get caught up on Zebras 2021, entire playlist. It's on YouTube and it's 63 videos, so you can check that out. Um, beyond that, so you have these demo videos up here. It's like, hey, how did you make that car wreck? Or how did you do this uh, basketball rim scene and make all this? I also have not on QBrush anymore, but on Gumroad and ArtStation here. Uh, my products? I don't know. Look on here somewhere. I have um, on the marketplace, I have demo videos, and then obviously on Gumroad, I have for download. Why is this all busted up? Um, you know what? Let's do this. There it is. Ah, uh, oh, I guess because it's small. There we go. Um, so this one right here is it was 2021 was new plus bonus video files. There's five extra hours and I went ahead and threw on um, the resources here. So yeah, you'll actually have the basketball and the shark files and the truck scene and this little uh, lumpy head guy. So you actually can download those e-tools and check those out. Um, but what we can also do is we can go down here, recording, let me bring these in real quick. 2021. Oh, you know what, it's not even in there. I forgot that was a different test. Uh, truck busted 03. So if I load this up, go out of that mode here. And let's do this. Let's take, um, let's hit W, transpose, um, move multiple selected, and I'm just going to grab, hold down control shift, I'm going to take, oh boy, I'm going to take uh, all of this here and unhatch him, and I'm going to hit control F, and yes, I'm going to say person. So now I go in here to subtool, and now we have uh, person folder. So I know that everything not in that folder should be deletable. So I'm going to take this truck and say, um, I guess I can leave all this stuff in there. It's not that big a deal. So we can go through here and you're going to see this guy has a poly paint on him. So when I go through here and I say render external renderer key shot and throw that over, I'll show you some ways to deal. And it's also in the bonus videos too, but we'll touch on this a little bit. So I'm using the ZBrush bridge. So the ZBrush bridge. You can buy, uh, it's one-time purchase, it's useful. It's just a license that'll carry through all of the versions of ZBrush. And then of course, if you want to upgrade Keyshot, that's gonna be 
slightly extra cost here. But we'll go through here. Oh boy. Let me see if we're. Can y'all see that? Uh, okay, here's one thing I can do. Let's go Camtasia Recorder. Mm hmm. There we go. So now I have guides. You also might have noticed when we did. Oh, also, if you're new to ZBrush 2021, I should bring this up. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and pause that. Uh, Pixel Logics YouTube channel. Here's the live stream event. <clears throat> so there's Joseph Dressed. There's me. And we're talking all about ZBrush 2021. So if you want to check that out, you can see our live stream and Joseph Dress because there's some really cool functionality too. So well, look at that. Uh, but in here, essentially, if we take this in here and we say edit preferences. Okay. So now I can navigate. Oh, uh, you know, the, the reason I brought that up is uh, while I was recording, I had my Camtasia uh, lined up so I could know where on the screen I was, and I totally forgot it was there. So that's why there was a green border around my screen when I was demoing. Uh, so I'll go ahead and kill that. So now we have our object here, and you're going to see we have our, mat, our poly paint. So if I double click this in our scene here, let's go ahead and shrink these down a little bit. Uh, we have our guy here, and if I take double click him, go to my material graph, you're going to see there's a texture map legacy. This is what's holding our polypane information. So I'm going to upgrade this node, just double click it, upgrade to new node. Don't need this one anymore, delete it. And in here, you're going to see apply matte cap is also one. If you don't want that, just turn that off. You're going to see the mode is set to vertex color. So if I change this to matte cap only, it gets rid of it. But the vertex color is held in Keyshot. Now, if you're not using the bridge, maybe FBX export will, should hold your polypane. I don't know. I, this is what I use. Uh, another thing I did here too, I downloaded this, I want to say, translucent human skin from the cloud library. So you can go through here, load up your cloud library, download this. And if I'm like, well, I want to keep my matte cap, but I also want to use this translucent skin, I'm just going to drag this right in here. So now I have all the skin stuff that comes in with this material, and then I'm going to take this and plug it into my surface. So now, um, it's like, oh no, I've lost my poly paint. And it also looks horrifying. Uh, in here, what we can do is we can go through here. We're going to change this translucency down a little bit. 50 might be a little bit much for that scale. And then also underneath textures, these are a little large. So we'll say like 0.1. Oops. 0.1 for the texture and specular, and then also the bump map. We'll tame that down. So now we've got some translucent skin. And again, you can mess with the translucency. But again, we've lost our poly paint. So this is where that skin color comes into play. If I take my matte cap here and plug that into the texture, now we'll get my poly paint back. Now, if you wanted to, like, uh, let's see. Do, do, do. If you wanted to merge this matte cap color, uh, oh, advanced, we don't need anymore, by the way. If you wanted to kind of merge this with your, you know, it's like, oh, I wanted to keep some of that skin material here. There's utilities in here. So you can say, um, color adjust, composite, that kind of came in today. I want to say maybe color composite. So we can go in here and make, like, maybe make this uh, a background, make this color your source, and then you could use this to plug in so you can kind of mix your poly paint and the original or the skin texture that came in with the um, this here maybe play around with that uh, but again long story short your matte cap and your apply matte cap here is still there and your vertex color and there's a little bit of brightness and contrast you can play with here so that's essentially you know keeping your poly paint in here applying new materials in the material graph now this i think requires pro Keyshot 3 9.3 Pro. Of course, I use the material graph all the time, so that's kind of something I want to keep. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Shouldn't you always sculpt on a zero mesh model because of the clean topology? Generally, it's a little more predictable. You don't have to do anything, though. Uh, how to split a high number of parts model like a helmet. Uh, we can go over that maybe. How to make copies of one object and modify the original object and all the copies of it will get the same modifications. Uh, well, if I understand correctly, in the new ZBrush 2021, let's go ahead and pause that there. If you scroll down, there is 
somewhere here. Nano mesh instances. You can use this. I'll start at like video 51. Actually, video 52 is my preferred method, and I can show you that one really quick. So let's go ahead and say delete all. And we've got our body mail, and we're going to say unify. And I want to put, uh, <laughs> let's get rid of those eyeballs. Uh, okay, and also let's say delete. Them. I mean, heck, we, we can we can do it with anything. So what I can do is let's do this. Let's go here to append. I'm just gonna append just a regular old poly mesh here. I'm gonna go to my comma key here, and we're going to uh, brush, and we're going to say IMM and Dragon Bones, and we're gonna select this one. We're gonna hit W. I'm just gonna choose something. So this is our object here. So what we want to do is I'm going to kind of rotate this around to the direction I want, I suppose. I'm going to hold down shift to snap it here. And I'm going to say with this one selected, there's a new macro. And again, if you want to know more about this and like what a nano mesh plane is and how you use instances with nano mesh and, and whatnot, uh, you watch those videos. Uh, did I send those out? Yeah. Start video 50, start at video 51. That'll, that'll go through a little bit more. Like there's a, actually start here 49. There's a nano mesh refresher, and then it'll go through. But anyway, uh, we have this thing here, and there's a macro, so you can say create instances subtool. So click that button, and it'll say, hey, you can drag this thing around now, and it's an instance, so I can't sculpt on it. Uh, but if we go down here to nano mesh, <clears throat> and nano mesh is on, uh, we can say show placement, and you can see there's just a big plane sitting there. So the cool thing about this is uh, and our original is hidden so now we have this big instance sitting here and we can move this wherever we want <laughs> uh, so we'll go ahead and like we'll put this here and again these are instances can't really sculpt on them if i try to go through here with my standard brush and start sculpting it's gonna be like what are you trying to do and i see these little points out here again it's only going to see your placement as viable geometry. The rest of this geometry is just an instance here. So you can go through here and you can control drag this off. Like so. Make these uh, big or small or whatever you want to do. Um, rotate them around, scale, move, rotate. You can even rotate or scale non-uniformly if you want. I think already have to go this direction. Eh, maybe only two axes. Yeah, this axis isn't going to do anything. Um, so we've got all these different horns on here. And it's like, okay, well, now how do I sculpt on one and have it affect the rest of them? Well, that's when you can go through here and you can say edit mesh. So now we have actual geometry. We turn on polyframe. See, okay, I got real geo. So I can go through here and I can say uh, poly group, poly loop here, here, and here, and then inset poly group all our region. Pull these in and then Q mesh. Polygroup all, hold down shift, pull this in. And you can see as I'm doing this, they're all updating. Uh, in fact, I can go through here and say, you know what, let's just dynamesh this and go through and start sculpting or smoothing this stuff out. And it's going to be updating on the fly. Uh, or I can completely switch this out. So I'm like, oh, why do I have horns all over this thing? Um, let's go in here to B, I brush insert industrial parts. I mean, we can use IMM brushes too. Um, so you can go through here and as we insert these, it'll, that'll update as well. Uh, or like I did before, I can just completely swap these out with uh, Phillips head here. Now uh, you may have to go through and kind of, you can kind of eyeball it and reposition this back to where it would fit nicely within that plane, but you can also use your nano mesh features. I don't know why necessarily you would do something this drastic, um, but it should be doable. Uh, but yeah, and you can also use symmetry and all that good stuff. So watch those videos and I'll get you caught up in like, Instance opening. Now, one thing I do like to use this for uh, is if we let's go out of edit mesh here. If you're doing something mechanical, and um, you got a little robot guy here, and there's also a, a BI brush insert. Oops, BI brush inserts H. Uh, and there's a single poly in here, so you can go through here and hold down control, and you can snap these little planes all over the place. And then just like we did, control shift A, control shift drag, uh, split hidden. So now we have all these poly planes. Let's hit control W, 
BI brush insert industrial parts brush create nano mesh brush. So now we can hover over a face with that brush and we can say, oops, I deselected there. I'm sorry. Get a little hotkey active insert nano mesh polygraph ball. So now we can go through here. We can be like, ah, I didn't want that nano mesh. I wanted a Phillips head all over here. Great, perfect. And now I can go through here and I can say uh, turn off show placement. And now I can go through here and I can even you know, change some rotation. So if I say like, oh, the Z rotation, I want a little variant so they're not all facing the same way. And I also want to inset these a little bit. So we'll do a little Z offset, kind of embed it a little bit in my mesh. Perfect. And then the art director goes, oh, those are all a little bit too big. Okay, so now if I, hey, these are all insert mesh brushes, I have to go through here and replace all of these. Or I can go through here and be like, okay, I'm a little smaller. Great. And then he's like, actually, you know what? I want a flathead screw. Okay, so instead of, you know, going through and replacing all these, you can just hit W and then go through here and just replace this. Now you may have to go through here and do a unify here. Uh, so now we've replaced those all with flathead screws. And in fact, you know how our directors are. They're like, yeah, I like that flathead screw, but now I want to do something over here. Do again, we'll inset here. And I want a little ridge along here. Sure, we can do that. So now all of these have been updated with a little ridge. And then you can go through here again and change your X, Y, <clears throat> and Z offsets. And you can also do this individually because they're just planes that are driving these instances. Go over here, turn on show placement. We'll then control alt and then W. And then as long as you move this plane around, uh, you can do this. Now, these are all set to proportional. If you use the macro, it would set it to fit, uh, which is better uh, because what you can do when you have it on fit, you can make these fit to scale. And then also you can use scale here to be like, I want this one to be a little bigger. Let's turn on L sim. This one I want to be bigger. And you don't have to do show placement. You can literally just be like, okay, this one I want to be bigger. And then uh, this one, go to unmatched mesh center. This one I want to be smaller. And also moved up or control drag up some more copies of that. So very flexible. Um, after deleting subdivision, can we reconstruct it again? For instance, we're working Z modeler sub D. It's the best way to use Z modeler with multiple subdivisions. Um, it's going to be very limited. That's why I like to use dynamic subdivisions. If you use multiple subdivisions, uh, basically, and this is kind of a ZBrush 2021 new feature. So when here, a cylinder edit, make polymesh 3D. Um, and then we go through here and it's like, okay, I want to, you know, let's group by normals and then increase PG and then do like increase level of two, smooth set div of three. We'll put in a couple of control loops we can get rid of. Uh, like if we do increase level one here, a little bit of scalloping in here. So we'll say insert single edge loop, or we can do this. We can say, give me this poly group, control shift drag, let's hit control W, make these all one poly group. And then we can go through here to make that more obvious. We can say inset poly group all and inset both of these. So now we get a little control loop in here so it'll smooth a little bit better. There we go, nice smooth model. And then if I ever wanna make changes, no big deal. In fact, while it's smooth, I can go through here and say poly group poly loop here and here. And in fact, I can start alt painting in here and let go and it'll go ahead and paint this for me. Or if I was like, ah, I messed that up. Alt and then shift, paint back over this. You can also do alt start painting and then in 2021, you can unpaint this, um, but basically, um, you can start alt painting on this, tap shift, inherit that, and then just start painting with that poly group. So now we can go through here and we could say, what can we say? Q mesh poly group all. And now we're Z modeling. However, if we're like, okay, this is the perfect model. I love it. And I'm going to say dynamic subdivisions apply. Great. Uh, oh, wait, you know what? Actually, I want to take these poly loops and go through here and be like, Oh crap, now I got a bunch of geometry. Well, I can still go down here and do like polygroup poly loop. It'll let me do that in ZBrush 2021 as long as it's not going to affect the vert order that has to be maintained to maintain your polygroups uh, or to maintain your geometry and your subdivisions. Uh, you can do that. You can, if you wanted to, <laughs> you could go in here to like free subdivision levels and then it's like, okay, I can say Q mesh polygroup all pull this out and then unfreeze my subdivision levels and it might work okay. Uh, that can be pretty iffy. Um, so if you want to use Z modeler on a lowest subdivision level, 
or even on the highest subdivision level if you want to. And it's like, okay, actually on subdivision level two, I want to go through here and like maybe uh, paint these ones. It'll let you. But if you want to go through here and change the vert count or order, uh, QMesh Polygroup all and pull this out, it won't let you. It'll be like, ah, you have subdivision levels. So here's where you can go, well, you can delete lower, delete higher, pull this out, add supporting edge loops so you can reconstruct back. That's kind of a nightmare. You can use, um, you can go up here, you can freeze subdivision levels. You can take these two here and then unfreeze subdivision levels. Uh, but it's like, oh, I wanted to crease that. So usually when I'm working, I just use dynamic because it's so much more flexible. As soon as you add subdivision levels, all of a sudden you're going to be hamstrung by lack of functionality. Uh, you, so, but you, you can reconstruct it if you want. Um, is, but he has the thing too, is like, okay, so we have, we're going to divide this up. Okay. It looks great. Okay. I'm going to delete lower so I can actually go through here and be like, okay, I'm going to take this here and we're going to Q mesh this out. Okay. Okay. Great. I'm going to reconstruct. It's not going to let you because it's using an algorithm to go, I'm going to reconstruct all these back to their original uh, face, but we've added more faces over here. So if you wanted to do that, you could try going through here and being like, okay, um, we may be able to do something like insert single edge loop. And <laughs> maybe reconstruct from that. I mean, there's, there's ways, but I mean, we just pull out an arbitrary number of these polys. So yeah, that's going to be a tough one. Uh, there might be ways to do it, but I would rethink your methodology rather than trying to shoehorn a technique onto it. Like order of operations. Uh, oh yeah, again, uh, sorry if I missed something in here. Uh, 3D character workflow. Yeah, that's all over my YouTube channel. Like we've done a lot of that stuff. If you, if you like anything catches your interests, geez. Okay. How many videos are we in here? Um, my playlist here, there's like, um, concept sketching, concept mech helmet. These are really old. Um, there's character stuff in ZBrush. This one here. There's also when we have our previous live stream full episodes and stuff, like we do a ton of character work here. So here's like me going through some characters again. It's kind of old, but also over here on my works, uh, this stuff hasn't been migrated over because it's so old and I wasn't doing it at the time. But if you go to my Pavlovich workshop and go all the way back to the beginning, episode one, and we go through and we do like anatomy and sculpting and put on a tech suit and start doing some armor and stuff like that. So it's there. Uh, but to answer the question, um, what's the best way to use the model where it's multiple subdivisions? Don't like order of operations, do what you need to do without subdivisions and then only do subdivisions and control loops when you actually have to. Um, otherwise it's going to be kind of a pain if you can, if you can't, sure. There's like nine hoops you can jump through, but gross. Uh, geometry HD is used for really high resolution billion polygon sculpting. Uh, so of filing, it's got my name in the file name. All right. Is there a way to make a sub tool you're working on transparent? There are times when it'd be excessively useful. Uh, I don't think so. Um, yes. I don't have enhanced macros. That's something I have to download externally. I use 2020. That's a 2021. So of course, if you're a subscription user, 2021 is a free upgrade. And if you're a, uh, you bought the perpetual license, it's a free upgrade. So why stay on 2020? <laughs> um, seems like a scale master and click center in the world and resize it to XYZ after a while its position is off and the scale is shifted slightly if the position's ever off you can go here to position and just zero out that X so if it's like it's like ah why is my X symmetry off a little bit just go in here and hit zero maybe I'm not sure why your model would be. Again, I've been using ZBrush 15 years and I don't remember my model bouncing around like the scale massively unless there's like a gremlin or something. 
Hey, Saeed. Um, next major is 2021, Valerie is 2020. Ah. Oh, that's another thing too. If you're having like, uh, there is some preferences in here and under tablet, there's some new options if you guys missed that. On the 2021.1 upgrade, so you have tablet driver API. So if you're having like slowdowns and lag while you're using ZBrush, maybe try one of these other options. Is there a way to smooth your retopology without moving it from place, like Maya's Relax? Uh, there's a relax in here. <laughs> Maybe. How did you make the electric pole look like it broke as if you did it with a ZBrush feature rather than by hand? Yeah, that was just me going through here. So Shift D to, well, actually we don't have dynamic subdivisions. So here's dynamic turned on. So essentially uh, scale this in and scale this out. So we got our broken pole here. Whoa, do I have transpose claw? Brush transpose regular. <laughs> Brush transpose claw. That's expected. Brush transpose regular transpose. That's not expected. Oh, I have X symmetry turned on. I was like, whoa, what is going on? Um, okay, so this is, uh, we go ahead and split this point. So uh, through here, we can say group, um, group by normals, isolate this, delete hidden. And then through here, just do a, an extrude edge. And then I'm gonna actually turn off uh, attraction. So no attraction here. And I just go through here and just kind of pull out these things. And with 2021, uh, oh, and if you missed this too, like I, I mean, obviously I did the eight hours of videos that you can watch, but also, I don't know if it would be faster or not, but there's also a, um, this live stream full episodes playlist here is your 2021 new features. So we go through a bunch of the 2021 new features. One of those is edge extrusion. So now you can extrude edges, you can snap to surfaces, you can automatically weld stuff. But I basically just went through here and just splintered it like this, maybe turned on a little dynamic with uh, thickness turned on. So there's dynamic thickness now. Uh, we'll go ahead and say this offset here. So that's all I did, nothing, nothing spectacular. Let's kind of go through here and did that for both sides. Explain the function, how it is working brush alpha and texture poly paint mode. Um, yeah, that's, that's basic. So again, you're brand new to ZBrush, you don't know how poly paint and alphas work, right here. This is your guide. Look at these and you can learn all the brand new to ZBrush functionality like alphas and poly painting. When should you do Dynamesh versus Sculptress when starting a character? Personal preference. Uh oh, something went wrong. I have to reload the page. Oh no, I just lost everybody's chat. <laughs> Sorry about that. So basically, uh, personal preference, Dynamesh, and um, a uh, Sculptress Pro is where we left off. I'm gonna go ahead and clear ZBrush out here. Turn this back on, and what we're gonna be doing? Oh yeah, we're making bird feet. So, um, cool. Sorry about that. I just lost the entire chat. It said something went wrong. Reload this page, and I reloaded it, and it destroyed the entire chat. Thanks. Uh, restream. So let's go through here, and uh, a couple different ways you can make feet. You can go through here with the Z spheres, obviously. And you can also go through here with like some cylinders and kind of bend them around. So we can start there. So here's a here's a foot make polymesh 3D. Like so. And then we can say control drag this off here. And let me put a little toe right down the middle. And if I want to bend this, I can go through here. I'm going to say like bend curve. And I can put it down the axis that I want and the resolution I want. Go through here and be like, yeah, give me a little 
hook here. Cool. And then uh, we can say control drag off this here. And, we can try, and you know what? We can even do it. Um, we can do like a mirror, mirror and weld, turn on X symmetry, and we can dynamesh this to kind of put those together. I guess that'll work. Let's go ahead and dynamesh these. We'll go through here and inflate. And this can be the start of our beautiful foot. Now on the back here is probably another one. So this is where like you can go into Sculptors Pro, um, BSH for a snake hook brush and kind of just pull out um, something worthwhile. Put this back towel in here. And uh, we're good to go. We have, a, we have a chicken foot. So now we can go through here. Uh, to make this ZBrush Z remesh a little bit easier, we're going to go into Trim Curve. I'm just going to pop this top off here. Delete Hidden. And if we want to, we can actually control this. Let's say Control W, Control Shift, Slice Curve. I can tell Z Remesher, give me like little joint positions um, in between here. And again, we'll do a mirror, mirror and weld and maybe along the back of the thumb here. That just might make it a little bit easier. In fact, if you want to get more concrete, you can actually go through here and you can slice. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oops. And we'll do another. There we go. So we've kind of d controlled. Eh, actually, that's like really gross. Let's do... These are all really gross. Let's isolate this one and we'll cut through here. And then we'll isolate this one and we'll cut through here. And then we'll do another mirror, mirror, well, there we go. So I'm basically telling zero mesh where I want my loops to go. And then we can go in here. Let's actually make this brighter so you can see it. Zero mesh or half, depth size down to zero is probably fine. Keep groups, smooth groups down to zero because it's already smooth. And we can just zero mesh this, get ourselves some new topology. Uh, what we can also do, and if it's having a little bit of issues here, uh, one of the ways you can kind of fix this, you go there and smooth it, and then we can go there and start alt painting and tap shift to kind of inherit those. Kind of clean that up a little bit, help it out just a tad. And now zero mesh half. There we go. Um, looks like there is some, eh, that's fine. Okay, good enough foot here. And in fact, if you want to do a different algorithm, hold down alt. Zero mesh. I'll give you a little different algorithm. Actually, it works a little bit better. Uh, okay, so we're good to go. Now, if I want to UV this, uh, I can use these. So, if I want to go through here and do like a, um, what do we want to do? We want to do a Z plugin, UV master symmetry, polygroups on, and you can unwrap with polygroups. So, when we go in here to flatten, it'll be like this. However, um, I don't know if that's in entirely useful because I want these polygroups to go down. So what I want to do is actually take these here, make them all one polygroup. So now I can unwrap these and then flatten. So I want to put these all down the same angle, or so they're pointing in the same direction. So we'll go through here and we'll just kind of move these around. Um, control shift drag, control shift A, uh, control tap to mask these here. We can go ahead and turn off X symmetry as well. So and the foot traveling in that direction. I guess these directions should be fine. I don't think, I'm trying to think through the problem here. I think this will be fine. So we'll go ahead and say unflatten. So now these, and if you want to play it safe, work on a clone. Or if you have subdivision history, work on a clone. Um, so now we can, uh, and actually, you know what I do like, I like to go through here and say close this hole here. Oops. There we go. Uh, and that might not have UVs. I don't really care that much. Or if the UVs are all in there, it's fine. Um, so now what we're going to do is, although it didn't kill my UVs, right? Flatten. Yeah, we're fine. So if we want to go through here and we want to do a, let's hit D for dynamic, a little bit of a smoother look. We're going to go also, let's go in here to B, comma key, brush. There are scales brush in here, fish scales, lizard scales. Ah, these aren't really tiling though, are they? These are, we'll take these fish scales. So uh, we have this brush alpha here. I'm gonna say alpha export to my desktop. We'll call this fish scales. So if I want, go in here to surface, 
noise alpha. Grab those fish scales I just exported here. Let's say OK. I'm going to change this back over to Smack Gray. Maybe go into my dynamic. Oops. Sorry. Uh, go in here, my dynamic. Smooth this out a little bit. Again, surface noise. Edit. We have. We don't want to mix basic noise. We're going to take our alpha scale. If I scale that down, crank that strength up a little bit. We're going to say use my UVs. So now, and I can always move my UVs around as needed. Um, but if I use my UVs, let's see if we can change that angle for this one. Z angle, X angle. No, it's not going to affect my alpha, is it? So I can go through here. I can. Or I guess I can rotate that alpha. Yeah, that's fine. So you can rotate your UVs or you can rotate your alpha, but essentially what I'm doing is playing around so I can get very precise scales going in the direction that I want. I can hit OK, and now I have this, but I want to go ahead and apply this to my mesh. So this goes back to, you know, how do you apply this to your mesh and have control? So one of the things we need to do first is go in here to Geometry uh, Dynamic, because right now this doesn't exist. So we need to go here and apply that, and in fact, probably give myself almost a couple million uh, polygons here. So I'm going to go in here, uh, make a new, let's go down here to Morph Target, Store Morph Target, uh, Layers, add a new layer, Noise, Mask by Noise, and then we can go through here, go into Masking, and say Turn off View Mask, and then you can like inflate uh, through here. Oops. So we can deflate in this case, and so now we can put on all these scales here, and it's like, oh great, but since we're doing it on a layer, we have the ability to go through here and just fine tune exactly how much, or if you want to invert it, or if you want to over crank it. You also have your morph targets. So if you want to switch your morph target out and then do BMO and go through here, and you can. Um, no, oh, I turn this layer back on. Uh, yeah, I guess before we do that, let's go over here. We like this layer, bake all. Morph target, switch. BMO, you can go through here and like sculpt back in exactly where you want these to go if you want to like compound scales or something like that. Or you can just keep all of them. You can use your morph target to morph things out if you want it, that's better. Uh, we can go ahead and say delete morph target. So on top of here, uh, we can add more scales to this uh, through a layer and you can also use um, I mean, we might even be able to use, let me see, let's go in here to our brushes. Just a little creature, scale, and let's see if we go down here, let's go to depth. don't want this to be on there. Yeah, it's kind of pulling the geometry. I wonder if that's because... So we can use a layer brush and I can go through here and I can add... Hmm. I'm going to have to think about this one. There should be a way where you can... I mean, I guess you could use your morph brush and kind of morph back through an alpha. Kind of an interesting one. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna play around with this a little bit. Um, and again, these these are um, boy, these are intense. That ball doesn't seem to be. You know, let's do this. Let's do a um, let's go out of edit mode. Switch. Let's go in here to our plane. Edit, make poly mesh 3D, geometry, reconstruct back down to this, and then maybe uh, divide this. Oops, turn off smooth, divide this a couple more times. We'll pull out. Let's go back up here to Chisel Creature, Brush, 
Oh, mesh. So now we have this new one here. I didn't mess around with these settings. <clears throat> well, I'll play with that. I think there is a way where you can kind of do that without messing around too much with the underlying, or you can override a little bit, but it might be uh, a little bit much. It might also be an order of operations things, but. Um, Page logic could memorize the folder you saved the project to avoid the time search when you import or export other files. I think it's a preference. Um, where is that at? Somewhere in here is a file something or other performance edit. Now it would be edit. It would be miscellaneous. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, UZ folders. Eh, I guess that's the opposite. That'll remember import, export, save. It'll go to the appropriate ZBrush folder for default for the exam. So Z folder, ZBrush, Z tools will go to the Z tool folder. Z projects will go to Z projects. Alphas will go to alphas. Um, but probably not what you're looking for. How can you make a liquid falling with ZBrush? Um, it's more of a I don't know. I'd have to play with that one. I'm not sure. Hey, John, you? Yeah, I did totally lose the chat window. <laughs> uh, if you need to set X back to zero, you need to merge all sub tools together so they follow. Um, you can. I wonder if there's like a little Z repeat that you could do. We'll go ahead and do all of that. Same number to all of them. It might be safer. I mean, not safer, but you could also just, if you have, um, let's see here, tool. Yeah, a bunch of different subtools in here. If you need to move something over, especially if it has this little position here, or like all, some of these positions got off a little bit, um, zero it out, and you can just kind of hit the these off. Uh, so you can hit this little, you just hit your down arrow. So you, as you go through here, you can just like, oop, this one's off. Just hit your down arrow. Oop, this one's off. Down arrow. Oop, this one's off. But again, that's, those are off because they were moved. So in this case, it's not that they're off, it's that they were literally moved for a reason. But if, it, if it's off just a little bit uh, and you didn't move it for a reason, then maybe that would work. If I want to cape and I want to boss line across it, how do I do that without having to draw the uh, height manually? I mean, you can try surface noise. I'm, I, I guess I'm misunderstanding the word manually. I mean, if you want to line across something, uh, it might be a little bit of a manual process. Oh, uh, to go to your point, pre-drag, if you wanted to, like, um, let me see, comma key project here, and we want to do something like um, append plane here, rotate it, and you know what, let's take this head and shrink it down just a bit. Okay, so we have this plane here, we have new dynamic thickness. Over here under geometry, dynamic, we can turn this on. We can keep our smooth on. We can turn thickness up a little bit. We can say, go over here to our brand new dynamics folder. So exciting, gravity, turn, calculate a collision volume, run that collision, and then we got cloth here. Of course, if it's too stretchy, you want to play around with your simulation iterations, your gravity speed, turn that down, simulation iterations up. You can also change your firmness here. I'll keep firmness of two. So it'll give us, so this will allow us more time for that calculation to take place. Again, this is all stuff that I go over in um, that playlist here. But now we have this, and we also have really cool uh, micro poly. So I can go through here manually and just swap all these out. So if I want chain mail here, let's turn smooth so div down to one. So now you've got like a chain mail claw. So we go in here to a BTC and go through, and like it's going to 
uh, run the claw simulation as I move this around or B uh, brush cloth. God, it's, been, it's actually been a minute since I've used this. Uh, brush cloth, hours uh, hook. It's not, it's something weird that I don't think of. B, C, K, hook. Uh, you can go through here and you can just kind of pull this around. And again, it's running the simulation and the micro poly is also being drawn uh, after the after the fact. So you can go through here and you can change your hitch step or you can change it to, you can also use custom in here. It's all in those videos I sent out earlier. This one, play all, here it is. And then over there on the right, you have the entire playlist there. Um, but, so we have this here, we have cloth. Uh, but what I was going to say is, let's go ahead and go back here. Um, there's other things you can do if you wanted to make there's two things you can do. Uh, you can use nanomeshers also. You can make a micro poly. So here's a micro poly of a cube one by one. So there's just a bunch of cubes in here. So if I go through here and I say hmm, fit and weld is off. Uh, fit on is probably fine. So we can say let's apply these dynamic here. So now all of these are actual cubes here. And now if we run uh, this with gravity um, and we'll go ahead and turn on self collision here yeah sorry uh, and we can keep floor collision on as well uh, we'll go ahead and turn on self collision simulation iterations will turn back down to 100 uh, gravity will turn back up to 10 and now um, you can use this let's turn off polyframe here so it might run a little bit faster so now so like if you wanted to simulate water droplets uh, you could use micro poly for that to like simulate um, kind of a, it's kind of a uh, rigid body simulation in a way. It's basically every plane gets an instance. Now, this is actually turning this into real geometry. If you want to avoid doing that and you want to use micro poly for this, um, this is where you can go. Uh, let's see here, edit, BI brush, insert industrial parts, W, uh, Phillips, let's say unify, go back to our plane here. We can go back into our geometry micro poly and we can, instead of actually turning it into real geometry, you can keep the planes here. So we're going to go in here to our micro poly, hold down control, grab that Phillips head. So now we have a bunch of Phillips heads as our mesh. And, and in fact, you know, again, brush cloth hook, it's just basically a Phillips head uh, towel. <laughs> However, we can go through here and we can turn off. I mean, we're not going to apply it, so it doesn't really matter, but we can go up here to geometry. Uh, I mean, you can travel all if you want to, but go in here to geometry, modify topology, and there's an unweld all. So now these are all still planes here. Um, oh, you know what? Turn off thickness. We don't need thickness on there. We don't need to double up our Phillips head. So we're going to turn off um, and also smooth subdivisions. So let's like, go ahead and do this. Let's hit control D to actually make this real subdivisions because that's how many Phillips heads I want. And we'll delete lower. And then I'm going to go down here to unweld also. They're still just planes, but they're planes being replaced by a micro mesh, or I'm sorry, a micro poly uh, that. So now when we run the simulation, it'll run a lot faster, uh, but basically the planes are what's determining uh, the position of those pieces. So in that case, it's like, oh, you know what? I didn't want Phillips head. I wanted scales. So now it looks like little pistachio shells just fell all over the place. Or you could run the simulation with pistachio shells if you want. But again, it's just those planes driving those micro polys that's driving this. So you're gonna see the simulation number one ran a little bit faster. Um, but as far as like, like if I wanted to simulate like, oh, a water droplet coming out and then it comes up and it kind of splits open and there's like 12 little, I guess I could just do that. Like if you dropped um, a little drop of milk here, let's see, make line mesh 3D. We're gonna go in here. You know what? Let's just do a quick Dynamesh transform, activate symmetry in the Y, radial count of 12. Maybe turn on Sculptures Pro, B, S, H, and go through here and be like, um, actually, what might even work even better? B, S, Snake Hook, Snake Sphere. This one I can just kind of like wiggle here. So, like, depending on 
the surface normally you can go through here and it's like oh it made a little dollop um, and then maybe it went through here and it did like an inflate and then maybe it did a little smooth here so it's like oh this this little drop happened in here and then you can also go through here let's turn this off and let's say um, transform and radial symmetry. I don't have any reference up of what this would actually look like. I'm just remembering back watching like Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street as a kid and they would be like here's slow motion photography in the early 80s. Isn't it crazy? Uh, it would be something like this. Now to simulate that with a cloth sim, hell if I know. Now, that's not to say, I mean, you can run a quote-unquote liquid, li liquid simulation. So we have uh, our plane here, and it's like, okay, uh, we're going to run gravity on this, and the gravity is just going to pull it down. And, uh, you know, we're getting a little stretchy here, so let's go ahead and we can, you know, we'll slow that gravity strength down just a bit. And then now that'll give us enough time to calculate as it's going down. So you can make it run as fast as you want, or um, like we were doing before BTC, transpose cloth, you can just pull it down. And it's going to be like, whoa, I don't have enough time to calculate those relationships. Or you pull it down slowly, and I give it plenty of time to drape while you're doing that. So that's one way. Uh, however, you're going to see if I turn on liquefy, um, well, if I have gravity and I run it, it's just going to pull that whole thing down until it runs into a collision surface, and then it acts like gravity's being applied to this surface. However, if I go over here and I turn on liquefy, it's not going to do anything because it needs something to um, kind of kick kick start it. So we're going to go through here and we'll just pull in some divots here and then when we run our gravity liquefy, you're going to see it's going to behave not like gravity where it's just like I'm going to fall until I hit something. This is more like it's falling through a liquid surface. So if you wanted to do something that's like, oh I want this to, oh and also maybe Oh, you know, it's more heavily weighted over here. So you know what, let's restart this. I'm going to give it a little something to think about on this side. You know what, let's also turn up that gravity strength back up to 10. So it's not falling so slowly. There we go. There we go. So now it's like it's falling through water. So you can see a little bit of a difference there. Now, as far as to like get a splash or a water effect, what you could do is you could fracture the geometry and you could run a like a ball bearing through the surface or have it as a collision volume and run the surface past the ball bearing is more accurate. And it could do something with that geometry that would look kind of liquidy, like a bullet hole going through a piece of metal. But uh, trying to run a simulation on a hard surface like falling stone keeps acting like cloth. Firmness doesn't help. Um, and he subjects to keep the polys from acting like cloth. That's going to be tough. Even when I was doing this one, the car wreck, uh, it's still one, it's still a cloth simulation. It's not a rigid body. You're not. I mean, again, it's who knows what ZBrush has up its sleeve. Um, but when we're going through here and we're simulating, did I have this mixed up? I did. A, oh, at the beginning. Yeah, like this kind of stuff here, where the cars, the truck's going through. And I guess we can just do that. It's not that difficult. Um, let's load the tool here. Um, resources, truck. So if you get the bonus videos and bonus Z tools, you'll get this along with it and you can follow along. Uh, Gumroad and Art Station, not QBrush right now. Uh, so we're going to go through here, we're going to turn off the tanks, and we're going to turn off everything but the truck, essentially. Okay, so we have this truck here, and we're like, okay, uh, I want to simulate this truck crashing into things. Uh, and it's all a bunch of different separate sub tools. So we're going to go in here to Z plugin, and then we're going to say, what are we going to say? We're going to say transpose master, t pose mesh. I'm going to take all of these meshes in here and it's going to, there's a bunch of dynamic turned on. All the smoothness you see is just fake. It's not real. So here's the actual geometry or the lowest subdivision geometry, depending on uh, what's there. And also the glass, I probably should pop out because that's going to behave erratically. And plus I'm going to shatter it later. But uh, if we go in here to append a cylinder here, we use this cylinder as our 
collision volume. Of course, BTR is what we're looking for here. And that's our regular transpose. So here we have something for it to collide with. So I can take this truck here, hit W, B, T, C to, uh, for cloth transpose. Go in here. Let's turn this up so we can kind of see it a little bit more maybe. And then dynamics. So because it's looking at these relationships and going, I'm going to use this algorithm to simulate like cloth. It's not thinking, oh, I'm going to use this to simulate like metal. Um, you're just going to get a cloth. Let's go ahead and turn off floor collision. Uh, response. Now you can kind of fake it a little bit like you were saying with like firmness up at six that'll make it so that um, ooh, self collision off. So firmness of six will be uh, see, gravity off. Sorry liquify is doing some crazy stuff. Turn that off. Uh, so we have oh we want to, we're also running to a collision volume we calculated earlier. Rerun that collision volume. So now boom as we go through here it's like okay it kind of it kind of seemed like metal, uh, pro possibly for two reasons. Number one, there weren't enough spans in here. So when you're doing like, I want to take this tank and simulate it, if you have a ton of geometry there and you simulate something on it, it's probably going to start cloth simulating. If you don't have a lot of geometry there, uh, like this back here in the truck bed, you're going to see it's a little bit more successful as it kind of bounces around. It kind of maintains its form a little bit better. Like see how that truck bed is like, yeah, I'm still pretty much a truck bed. There's nothing for it to really simulate. We have firmness way up and there's not a whole lot of points across here. So it's kind of behaving as you would expect. Now this thing in here uh, with, it has more points. It's going to simulate or, you know, this fabric seat we had in there. Uh, those are going to simulate a little bit more like cloth because there's more points in there and the more points it's looking at those relationships between those points and it's going, okay, I'm going to maintain these relationships like a cloth sim. Now that's hacky. I'm not saying like, this is how you should do metal simulations. I'm just saying in ZBrush, given the current system as of this recording, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, that might be a way to control it is just to have very, very few points and it'll maintain its form much better than if I was to go through here and like cut a bunch of edges into this truck bed, it would start immediately crumpling as opposed to maintaining its form. So something to consider. Uh, or in this case, we can like, you know, change its gravity, throw on gravity, set the direction in this direction, and then we can use our sim to go ahead and run uh, for us. Uh, and then the wheels just keep on going. Look at that. Perfect simulation. Just get sheared off and the wheels just keep going. Um, so maybe give that a shot. Is there a way to make this up there? We're working on transparent. Again, as far as I know, no clue. I have no idea. I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. That's like a Gabriel question. Uh, oh, okay, and if you know, Pro says, if you want to make a plane with a grid and a plan nano mesh with stone as a model, um, then unweld all. Same thing, and if you want it, so okay, we want to, ah, boom, there's our car wreck. Oops, it was a little bit slower. Oh, we did a car wreck, cool. So I'm going to take this here, delete it out of our scene, and then we can just take this back. So we're going to say, Z plugin, transpose mesh to C to da -da -da -da. So then all these things with our dynamic settings and our niceties in here is going to be updated to our car wreck scene and then we can modify from here. But if you wanted to like a crumbling stone wall, um, you can use nanomesh and simulate. I would still try first to do micro poly just because it's going to run a little bit faster. Uh, it won't be perfect, but again, if you wanted to do a, got a plane here, make poly mesh 3D, go down here and say, um, say what you want to say reconstruct. So here's our stone wall, delete higher. Uh, let's make some stones real quick. So we're going to go in here and we're going to say cube edit, make polymesh 30. Now I don't care about this necessarily being like, oh, it's oops, BTR. Uh, it needs to fit perfectly within whatever. It's like it can, it can do whatever. So we're going to make a square stone if I want to I can unify it, but we're not gonna we're gonna have this thing falling down right uh, so we're gonna go through here let's go ahead and just dynamesh this we'll say trim dynamic one just a second okay curl 
squirrels got their heartworm because it's September 1st. Um, so we're going to go through here and we'll make a little bit of stone here. There's also stones you can get out of your brush palette here. So we're going to make some blocky stones. And then now uh, we can go through here. And in fact, let's do this. Let's go into, because if we're using MicroPoly and we're making a bunch of instances of this, we want to be as low as possible. So let's do plug in, oops, um, decimation master, pre process current. K polys down to one K. It's trying to get this pretty low. Okay, great. So now here we can call this stone. However, if we also want to duplicate this off a bunch of times and go through here and like make variants through here. So it's like, I want one stone that kind of looks like this. Now the important thing here, if you're using micro poly is you cannot change the vert order. So you can go through here. Oh, and actually, Hopefully it didn't give us nasty geometry because if I had to fix this mesh, micro poly not, might not work that great. Um, you know, so keep your same vert order, but go through here and make any adjustments you want. So now with these adjustments, it'll go through and it'll cycle through all these different rock types. So now when we go in here back to our polyplane and we say geometry, dynamic, smooth off, Micro poly on control tap stone. Now all of those different stones are kind of being populated on here. Now you can say don't weld, don't fit, scale this up a little bit so it kind of, whoa, uh, it doesn't upgrade, update on the fly. So it's a little bit touchy. Ooh, ooh, just, okay, you can tap it and then like maybe grab this upper slider a little bit. There we go. Here's our stone wall. Now we'll switch back over here to the start of material. So we have our stone wall here and we want to start crumbling. Uh, it's still a micro poly. So if you turn micro poly off, it's still just a plane. So you can go in here to unweld all. And then now when you go through here and you say collision volume off, we'll just set the floor collision on, gravity is fine. Uh, self collision, if you turn this on, it's gonna, those planes are really gonna see each other. And they're going to go nuts and our gravity direction is in the wrong direction. So we'll turn this gravity down just a bit. There we go. So now again, it's just those planes simulating, but you know, if you over crank it enough, you know, go in here to your scale and maybe just make it so it's just kind of over, you know, they'll, they'll behave a little bit more. Now, again, it's just a plane, but it's taking those G pieces of geometry and um, moving them around. So now here's the thing. If you go through here and you're like, okay, I've got my stones and I'm going to go through here and I'm going to say, um, you, same thing with nano poly. It's just nano mesh. It's going to have um, these as instances and then you can unwind all and run the simulation. Same thing with micro poly. You might have more leeway with um, nano meshes. There's some more options in here where you can do like variations and stuff. Uh, but same idea where you can unwell it all and have the instances follow that plane around. However, I think MicroPoly runs faster, uh, but if you're thinking, well, okay, let me just apply those as real geometry here, and now I'm gonna run the simulation. It might run okay-ish because we have so little geometry, so it's gonna maintain its forms a little bit better. So we run the simulation here with a lot of self-collision here. Yeah. And it's also pulling a lot of points around, so oof. Yeah, not so much. So collision, firmness, strength, simulation iterations. Crank that up, I suppose. But that's that's a little bit of a taller order. And kind of does it, but boy, is your mesh getting sheared a little bit, you know. But at least it's taking into account all those polygons. So as it crashes, I mean, it still doesn't have great... It'll, it'll kind of do something. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, I just do these streams once a month. First Tuesday of every month, I'm on Pixelogic's channel, and then copy the video over my YouTube channel, and then the first Thursday of every month. This Thursday coming up, I'm only going to be able to be on here for like an hour because I have to uh, jump start my wife's car and. Uh, Get the new, get a new battery for it. 
you focus on sculpts, topology, or portfolios in general. Um, I try not to focus on topology. Uh, topology is pretty straightforward. Sculpts are cool. Portfolios, also cool. How do you make a UV sphere in a rectangle or a circle? I'm not sure I follow. Oh, detail around the edge of the cape without being sculpted in manually, such as the curve functions, frame mesh border. Oh, I thought they were talking about, um, so let's make a cape real quick. I thought they literally meant like a, uh, well, here's a cape. Perfect. Brush cloth hook. So actually, uh, B, G, C. So here's this. Oops. Rerun that collision volume here. So here, oh, firmness of two. <clears throat> ahead and say mask here so we have a cape brush cloth hook and what a beautiful cape it is uh, so if it's literally just going oh I want to bore I thought it was, I thought they were talking about like I want to put a, a like a stripe across this cape um, you can still do it it's just gonna be prior manual process if it is literally just um, something as simple as like going over here to uh, where are we looking here? Uh, we don't want a mask, we want a stroke. This curve functions to my open border. Or uh, if you did have polygroups, we do Shift D, and it's like, you know what? Let's do Control Shift, select lasso, and we do an auto groups here. So now every single one of these, if we run a frame mesh border uh, with polygroups now instead of open border, we get stripes across here. And then we can go through here and do like brush curve strap snap or something and you can just put straps across here hit five to set that so now we can do a control shift a split hidden so now you have straps going across a that if that's all you're talking about then yeah you can use poly groups or whatever um, if you're talking about let's go ahead and say delete that if you're talking about like i want to put something across here um, that might be an order of operations thing. You may want to UV it first so you can flatten it out and then put something along a surface or put it in the texture of it's just a stripe. Um, unless it's for 3D print. I mean, hell, even if it is for 3D print, maybe putting a stripe in a texture, applying it as a displacement map might be easier. But um, you can always go through here. And as long as you have, let's see, plug in UV master. Uh, not symmetry, not polygroups. We'll just unwrap this and hit flatten. So like there's our cape UV'd back there. Uh, we can always go through here now that we have UVs and we can go to our UV map, we can morph our UV. And then uh, let's take bump down to zero. So now while we're in morph UV mode, uh, you can do whatever you want. So you go through here with your clay build up brush and be like, I wanna put a stripe across here. Let's turn on um, lazy mouse. So here, just, I guess we have stroke already open, don't we? Nope, I guess not. Stroke, lazy mouse. Um, this will not shift, I guess. Boy, that really doesn't want to work. Okay, fine. We'll go in here to lazy mouse. Um, oh, it's because I had it off. There we go. So we can put a, a stripe across here. Or we can do a backtrack line, snap to track, and just put a strike across here or paint it in if you want or go in here to your texture imports add this tile this a couple times paint Spotlight paint, of course, you need more resolution to capture that, uh, but you can go out of Morph UV and then go ahead and save this. So if you wanted more resolution, this is where you'd go. Dynamic, let's turn this material on to. Um, geometry, divide, 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 divide. There we go, we got some resolution now. We'll remorph that out. Paint. Or 
if we give you back. And there we go. So now we were able to paint, we're able to sculpt if we want to. Uh, go back in here to our clay build up and sculpt a line across here, morph it back, and then you'll have a line across your cape or standard brush, brush alpha, um, RGB. Turn on lazy radius. RGB. There you go. Uh, extractor brush drew a line across UVs like the shirt was plant, so it's easier. Yeah, same exact same thing as this. Um, in fact, if you're new, just like for ZBrush 2021, you may blow your mind. I also have a ZBrush 2020 what's new. So if you completely missed that train, here's 41 videos on all the new. If you don't know what an extractor brush is, check this series out. That'll get you caught up. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's probably my fault. Let me see. Um, what am I looking for here? Usually it's set up, but when in doubt, uh, right, oh, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and head out, but here, right before I head out, I'll go ahead and do a uh, drafts. Why is this running so slow? Come on, come on. Uh, streaming. We'll try this. Um, yes. But the whole point of it was like, how do you do this not manually? Well, of course you can flatten and do a bunch of manual work. <laughs> not manually part is the part I was. Uh... Uh, oh boy, I'm way behind. Uh, can you recommend a spec for working with 100 million plus polygons? Uh... No, I have I have my computer runs like butter, but it's all I'm using. AMD Ryzen 30 3970 X, 32 core processor. I think on this one I have 64 gig of 3600 speed RAM and NVMe M.2 drives. If you want to know more about that, you can check out my YouTube channel here. Let's go ahead and close that out. Um, if you go in here and do workstation. So CPU, hard drive speed, RAM is pretty important for ZBrush in particular. Here's the updated video. So if you want to know more about like what the hell is an M.2 drive, uh, this will have what, what the hell is a 3970X. This will have a bunch of information on that. So again, I don't, I don't know what's going to work in your situation or what you're uh, actually running, but for what it's worth. Yes, and if I miss your comments, I apologize. I don't really care that much, but I'm sorry. Uh, when Q's where a snake hook places Geo, I had Sphere Sculptures Pro. One of the pull a tail at the XY camera plane when I was done, I was also pointing out in the Z. Uh, well, so yeah, there's, um, it's under the modify brush. So here's move and snake hooks, new snake hook functionality. Uh, might help you these top two videos. And whenever I, here's the problem, whenever I type in a message, it shoots it all the way down to the bottom. So then I got to go all the way back up through a bunch of comments from three different sources. 
So that's why it gets a little bit hectic. And also, I'm not doing anything. So I'm not over here sculpting a creature for four hours and then being like, oh, let me let me answer some slow questions coming in. I'm literally answering like all these questions for two straight hours. Um, it's a little more difficult. But so as far as that works, here's a sphere and they're all over the place. It's not like, hey, we're going to be talking about creatures today. I only answer creature questions. It's like, how do you make geometry transparent? And also, how do you uh, frame a mesh? And also, how do you make a rock wall fall down? And also, you know, that's it's scattered. So bear with me. Make poly mesh 3D. B S H snake cook sculptors pro on. So to go ahead and do this geometry, uh, it'll update the geometry as we go. So then we can go down here to our modifiers brush and we can say, uh, is it in the modifier sculptors pro somewhere in here? What am I thinking of? So if we go through here, we do B S H there's a snake sphere and you're going to see this one's going to behave a little bit differently. And I thought it was here. May oh, you know what? Is it under, it's not under stroke. It's under brush. Oh, so here, yes, brush modifier is what I'm looking for. So here's brush modifier is at uh, hundred and it's going to see, it's just going to kind of follow straight out from that brush stroke. If I set it to zero, you're going to see it's going to, let me see which one is it? Brush modifier at 100. Okay, yeah, so brush modifier at 100, if I just kind of wiggle it on here, it's going to follow straight out uh, at the camera. If I set it to zero, uh, if I wiggle it, it's not going to do much of anything, but when I pull, that's going to follow kind of the, the brush direction. So if we go through here and we set it to 50, it'll kind of be between camera and brush direction. Uh, something like that. But again, those snake hook brushes should give you, I don't use them that much, but that should give you a little bit more control over what direction that thing's going. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. anyone get an issue with orbit navigation 2020 and trying to click drag on the canvas to orbit sometimes breaks and have to click drag the margin instead um let's see so we're in here uh you can also use right click navigation if anybody isn't aware of that you can use your right click to uh get out of sticky situations but um click drag on the canvas to orbit and i have to click drag over here i mean that if, if you're zoomed in, it's only going to sculpt. So then over here, you do have to use your safe action or the margins to do it. But that's as expected. Um, cool. Cool. Thanks for the kind words. Yeah, the ZBrush for ideation. It, the, even the free videos will get you up and running on YouTube. Um, cool. I think I updated the title. Is there a way to rotate in increments with this gizmo instead of rotating it in big steps? I think so. I think if we do like, uh, oops, we still have cloth turned on. That's okay. So if we hold down shift, it's going to snap to increments of five. As far as like, can I set that to one? Gizmo 3D increment settings. Oh, I'm not sure off the top of my head. I assumed it might be in here. It wouldn't be under transpose units, would it? Rotation steps, 18. That might just be for transpose though defines the degree that the ZBrush will snap when pressing shift and moving the end of the transpose action line. Uh, yeah, so you can use, you can hit Y and use transpose and maybe this, so if you hold down shift, it gives you that much rotation and you can hit Y. Uh, that's not translated to the gizmo. Mm. Isn't it better to use less cores and more gigahertz CPUs for those single threaded operations? Sure. If you're only ever doing single threaded operations, which I can't think of one example of where that's the case, um, Yes. However, I'd be careful with that because not everything you're going to be doing is single threaded. And even in ZBrush, you know, like, oh, I'm going to run a cloth sim. That's single threaded, right? Wrong. Wrong. Scales wonderfully. So whatever single threaded operations you think you're running, you're probably wrong. Um, you know, and with the new ZBrush 2021, uh, it seems to scale fantastically. So again, like if all I was doing was like 1080p gaming and uh, doing ZBrush operations that only used a single core, 
um, maybe I would consider being like, well, let me just go for the fastest core. But of course I do video editing, rendering, uh, 9 million other things that require, why the hell would I want a fast single core if I'm gonna take the hit on the other 99 things I do to get a slight 3% increase in speed for this one single core operation I do in this one program. Um, obviously that's silly. So pick and choose your battles. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but um, that's usually the silly argument. Cool. Right on everybody. It is 8.11, I'm 11 minutes over. Thanks everybody. And I'll see you Thursday for an hour on my channel. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, what made you go AMD over Intel? Intel doesn't have anything that competes with AMD when it comes to multi-core CPUs and also PCIe 4.0, NVMe drives, all that good stuff. Um, they're just not competitive right now. Cool. Thanks, everybody. And uh, I'll catch you next time.